Hello, everyone. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville on the eve of Friday the 13th. So we're going spooky again. Just expect spooky the entire month of August. Just let's be honest. All right. Well, I'm Daniel Goodman. And over there's John. Um, John doesn't have his send all hate mail sign today. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, this is kind of a little bit of revenge for us um, on a double level because yeah. it was Seattle's minor league that kicked us out of the playoffs. And as an Avalanche fan, um, his the only team of his to make the playoffs got eliminated by him. So yeah. a little bit of bittersweet for both, both of us of a little, <laughs> thanks, we needed that. <laughs> um, so let's get into that. All right. Well, today the Nashville Predators took on the Seattle Kraken. Shots on goal in the first period. Nashville outshot Seattle 15 to 12. In the second period, Nashville outshot Seattle 13 to 4. In the third period, both teams had seven shots. And in total, Nashville outshoot Seattle 35 to 23. Nashville was better in the faceoff circle at 56.3% to Seattle's 43.8%. Nashville went 0 for 3 on the power play with 6 penalty minutes, while Seattle went 0 for 2 with 8 penalty minutes. Nashville outhit Seattle 25 to 18 and outblocked Seattle 21 to 19. So from the stat line you're telling me they played a complete game. Yes, they did. <laughs> Just from the stat line, I don't even need to go into the other stuff, but let's. Because, you know, both teams went 0 for 3. That means we had a good penalty kill. Yeah. We went 0 for 3. Their penalty kill did their thing. They went 0 for 2. Our penalty kill scored goals. Yeah. And that goal was scored by Colton Sissons at the 10-24 mark on the backhand. That goal was scored shorthanded with an assist from... Who's that? Cole Smith. There's so many Smiths in the league now. <laughs> there remember. really are. There have been so many that played for us. Yeah. We, what, we had Trevor, um, Craig, and now Cole. <laughs> yeah. I have a Craig Smith hockey jersey somewhere. Um, but no, uh, you know, um, that that play was literally made by Cole Smith. Um, yeah. He flipped it up there, and Sissons went and got it. I mean, Sissons did most of the work, but if Smith didn't put that puck right where it was, right on time, right on the money, you know, yeah, a whole different situation. And you know, this they they dominated them in that second period. Yeah, they did. Um, in the third period, uh, scoring at the 10.03 mark off of a deflection was Gustav Nyquist with an assist from Carrier, his first, and McDonough, his second. Um, Nyquist, always been a heads-up player, always thinking, always, you know, what's the angle, what's my play, what's my move. Right. I mean, his highlight reel is insane with just his patience, his, you know, yeah. uh, with all with the puck. I mean before getting kind of hot potatoed around the league, he was one of the top players as far as stick handling that I'd seen. Yeah, for sure. Um, You know, and uh, as a Preds fan, I did not like him in a, in a Red Wings jersey, but I will more than welcome him here. <laughs> <laughs> um, You know, and then Parson him with the wrist shot at the 18-19 mark. Um, that was an empty net. And One as wrist shot. Huh? I said a long wrist shot. Yeah, that had to be from the far circle, from the TV view. That was from the yeah. far circle. Who? And, and it was on the money. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> dead down the middle, but I mean, it came in the net at an angle where it was on the money. Yep. You know, other thing I wanted to talk about: Glass, sixty percent on the faceoff. Sissons, fifty-three percent on the faceoff. Trenet, one hundred percent. Nyquist, one hundred percent. Smith, one hundred percent. Novak had a rough night at twenty-five percent. O'Reilly at fifty-seven percent. So, 
what I'm saying is, is in the face-off circle, much, much better. Yeah. Um, defensively, I didn't see anybody out of position. Um, uh, somebody needs to buy Ryan McDonough. Um, a, an entirely new body after this game. Yeah, because dude had three block shots in the second period on a on a. Or it was the third, it was the third period on a power play that Seattle had had, and they literally just he just kept blocking shots, just kept blocking shots. Yeah, uh, Carrier too. Carrier had a lot of block shots today. Um, kudos to those guys. Um, if you're willing to block shots, goalies are gonna love you all, every day, all day. And speaking of goalies, in net for the Kraken was Philip Grubar. Grubar stopped 32 of 34 with a 0. .941 save percentage. He allowed one goal shorthanded and one goal on even strength. The empty net never counts towards the goalies. Right. So, UC Saro saw 23 shots, and as he says, no goals. <laughs> <laughs> no goals. <laughs> oh, what a commercial that is. Uh, shout out to the NHL for that one. It's a great joke, a great sense of humor by hockey players, and yeah, you know, yeah. You know. Three stars of the game. Third star of the game was Gustav Nyquist with a goal. Uh, Colton Sissons with the game-winning goal. Um, I mind, I'll add in that he had 100% on, on, on the faceoff and did very well. Yeah. So, um, And then Juice just played phenomenal. Um, I, I think this is the best that we've seen Saros play in a while, too. Yeah, um, I'd agree. I mean, even against the Lightning, he was battling. It, it wasn't the performance that they wanted. Right. But you're facing Tampa Bay. They have guys on LTIR because they're over the cap. Right. It's just, you know, not where it's supposed to be. So, you know, that's just one of those things. Um, In other news... Uh, uh, the Admirals announced their first concert, I believe it to be, uh-oh, <laughs> I had it in my notes. Sorry for the dead air here. It is Tesla. Tesla. January 26th. Um, buy an Admiral's ticket to that game, and you will get to see Tesla perform. Uh, Tesla has been they've been around a while, let's just say. Yeah. Um, but you know, uh Coming up, we got a couple things. Uh, we've got the bag, uh, home opener next Saturday. Um, we have Hocktoberfest on the uh, Saturday after that, which is um, music, broads, you know, basically like Oktoberfest, but with hockey. Yeah. Um, uh, November 4th, we've got Salute to the Military. Um, November 22nd, Wizards Night, tribute to probably Harry Potter. Probably. Uh, you know, uh, we got a night at the barn with a package from the, uh, with a hat, trucker hat package for the, uh, coming up. We got 20 years of Elf coming up, um. Princess Knight, salute to Cowbell. Um, like I said, Tesla. Tesla is going to be fun. Um, you know, lots coming up for the Admirals going forward. Um, and this is just the start of their promo schedule. This isn't even the stuff that pops up, you know, right. weeks before or a week before or the week of. I've had that happen before. Oh, we have a promo for this week, huh? Right. 
Um, so um, it's it actually, and I'm not saying that to discourage the team at all from doing it. I'm actually saying that you know um, it happened more happens more in um, minor league sports than you would think. I, I think I want to say um, before we get into all that. Um, kind of wanted to talk a little bit about um, uh, a little thank you today. Uh, the uh, as as many of you all know, John is an Avalanche fan. That's how he got into hockey. Um, that's where he fell in love with the game. It's where it starts. You know, um, love for the yeah. Preds. Um, they weren't there when we were kids. Yeah. You know? right. They were an expansion team. Um, you know, I have a lot of love for the Preds. They have built a great hockey environment, a great fan environment, and and it's just fun to cover them. Um, you know, uh, the one thing uh, and an easy connect to the city as Milwaukee and Nashville are linked by multiple sports, and as well as they're very familiar or similar in culture. Right. Um, but. Well, one of the things I wanted to say is mine is um, Buffalo and uh, my family. Uh, I have a lot of family, about 95 percent of the my my family, uh, the uh, Goodemont family uh, lives in that area or in surrounding cities like Rochester or even as south as Pennsylvania. So, um, you know, there's a couple in Cali and Arizona and Wisconsin and you know, there's a couple in uh, Ohio, and they're sc they're scattered, but a lot of them are in Buffalo. And um, uh, Buffalo lost uh, a, a dear member of their uh, staff um, for oh, main I mean, 71, 1971 was his first year. I believe. And they said that his, uh, the last year was the 2021-22 season. Um, Rick Jenneret is the voice of the Buffalo Sabres, has been for a long time. If you've ever heard the phrase top shelf where mama hides the cookies, um, you're you're pretty much going to go back and look at Rick Jenneret. If you, you know, uh, hotter than a firecracker, it, um, he said that, um, um, you know, he's he's just was a, a they put on the show. And he just made music to it. Right. And and for him, um, my inspiration comes a lot from just his personality and and he's inspired me. Uh I, I, I in no way idolize anybody because of my life, um, the way I carry myself, but I um I do look up to people and he is one of the voices of hockey that is very, very, very important, longest tenured. Um, broadcast announcer in hockey right you know um, uh, to put it as simple for admirals fans he's our bob he's their bob euchre all right like he's bob euchre of hockey and and it's just when you goes it's just going to be just as hard for me because i grew up listening to great commentators right and, you know um it it it's inspiring because I could say Euchre has a part in it too because he he's about as wacky as they get. Mm -hmm. If you've ever want to see some funny ha ha's, just go on YouTube, type in Bob Euchre Milwaukee Admirals commercial, and then you'll just have so much fun. Um, maybe one day we'll put it up on the uh, up on the podcast for you. Um, I'll talk to them see if they'll let me do it. <laughs> Um, but, you know, um, looking back, uh, there's always been, like I said, even when it comes to the Brewers, their AAA team is the Nashville Sound. And, you know, there's just that connection. Um, Giannis owns part of the soccer club down there. Right. There's there's just a, a deep connection between the two cities. It's actually funny because also part owner, Bill Forsberg, who's also a former admiral which they probably met while he was here <laughs> <laughs> for a cup of coffee. Because he was only here for 13 games. <laughs> um, but no, um, I saw a good game today. Yeah. Um, 
you know, a couple times I saw myself, or I, I was like, get out of the zone, get out of the zone. But they were just holding their defensive lines, just keeping pressure on them, but not over committing. Right. Um, know that Boston's going to look at everything we did today against Seattle, and we're going to have to make adjustments. You know? Um, you know, uh, that, that Ed, Ed, Edmonton too, they're coming up. These teams are going to be looking at our tape from the, the, the lightning game, this game, and Edmonton is going to be looking at what we do to adjust against Boston right. because Boston is still a very good hockey team. Yeah. Yep. They lost Krejci and, and Bergeron, but they don't sleep on Boston. Pasta's a good hockey player. They are a very well coached hockey team by uh I think it's uh Bruce Cassidy over there uh coaching the uh uh Boston Bruins nowadays and and they're just done a phenomenal job over there. Um I never um have had any disrespect towards the Bruins organization. Now there's one player on the organization that if he played for any other team in the league other than ours. I would hate him. And we all know he's their captain. Uh, congratulations, though, to Brad Marchand on being named the captain of a very historic hockey team in the Boston Bruins. Because, you know, when when things like that happen in the league and stuff like that, it, it gets very, very complicated with um, – how how you look at someone. Um, for instance, uh, he's replacing Patrice Bergeron. That's pretty much the same scrutiny you're, well, other than the fact that he's already proven himself. Um, but you're looking at like a, a young guy getting drafted to Chicago and Connor Bedard and you're under the microscope um, and you've got successors that just left in Taves and Kane and and, and there's a you know a history there and there's a culture there that wants to win at every season you know and and like i said the one way to explain that one for yet again wisconsin fans of sports is jordan love jordan love aaron Rodgers out jordan love in love's been there but he hasn't taken the ball and kind of you know and and the way I look at it is I think he's done fairly well, Love has. Now, last game, did he play well? No. Do I expect that from him from time to time? Yep. Right. <laughs> Young. This is his first time in you know professional football where you're the starter, you're the guy. You know, and, and that's there's a certain level of pressure that comes with that, especially when you don um uh, historic teams jerseys um we're just babies to this point still um they're not uh we've been around for 50 three years 54 roughly um and we've seen a lot of guys come and go Hall of Famers. Right. You know, um, I could spot a good hockey player who comes in here from a mile away. I could watch him in one game and tell you whether or not I see something or I see nothing. There's no middle ground. Either I see nothing in you or I see something in you. And nine out of ten, I hope to see something. You know, and um most recently, it was Yusuf Parsonen. Um, uh, Parsonen, I didn't know nothing about him. And I saw him in his first game, and he just the way he battles, the way he plays, the way – what you see in Nashville is what we saw in game one. All right. He plays that way. He does everything the right way. You know, and, and I will never fault that. But uh, you know, uh, anybody that stood out to you, John? I mean, I know that there was a few things, but yeah, I mean, Parson did really stand out today. Um, 
Another thing that stood out to me was the long passes. They did a lot of those this game. That was different to see. Yeah, to the transition. Um, I, 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 when you read the shots, I was wondering when you were gonna say, "Who? What's this?" <laughs> yeah, because we're not used to that against teams as structurally sound as Seattle. Right. <laughs> And, and, and I'm taking nothing away from Dave Hextall. What a wonderful coach he was over in Europe, and he's doing a great job here. Um, with Seattle, this young fan base, this and, and I, I mean young, not as a, I should say metaphorically, because yeah. they're they're still new. Vegas is still new. To me, at times, I wonder why, like. Arizona and Columbus are still here <laughs> because it's just like uh they get there and then they're back down. They get there and then they're back down. It's just like they can't break through that that glass ceiling that expansion teams have hit. You know, right. Seattle did it. They got into the playoffs, got past the first round, built up a lot of momentum around themselves. Uh, Vegas did it. They won the cup. Um, they went to the cup their first year. I mean, it, it's with the salary cap nowadays, and we're talking about expanding again within the next, what, four years I've been hearing? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, they, I've heard rumblings that they're going to do two at a time now. And, and that just adds more to, like, in a way, it does add more to our plate because we got to watch what moves they're looking at making, who we got to protect. Right. You know, all these things, every other team is looking at who can we give up that's not performing at a level and has an insane cap hit, but it still has some form of monetary value. All right. I'm also aware. We're good. <laughs> um, You know, uh, I just, there's so much. And with, uh, what is it, Houston and Atlanta? So the Central gets another team, uh, probably a team in the East. I'd say Atlanta probably joins with uh, with with uh, Florida's division or Tampa. I think they're in the same division. Yeah, they're in the same division. So I would see them join that division. You know, and and to be honest, I also wouldn't be surprised to see them join the Central and see Arizona pop back to the West. Yeah. Because I know Arizona is not happy being in the Central. Um, and with Houston joining, that would be perfect. With Atlanta joining, that would give us the 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 Nashville Atlanta rivalry again, where we actually feel like we hate somebody. Mm -hmm. Because before this, it was Detroit, and Detroit's not in our division. It's kind of Dallas, kind of the Blues, kind of the Blackhawks. I know I hate the Jets. Well, maybe that's just a throwback nod to when I hated Atlanta because they were the feeder team for the Wolves. So Nashville hated Atlanta and we hated the Wolves. It worked out. <laughs> it was just systemly hate. We don't like you. <laughs> that's how it was. And, and I'm talking about this like it's this was back in when, when the league expanded. Right. Well, I'm talking about it from a fan base standpoint. I'm not talking about it from the organizational standpoint. I'm not talking about it from a player standpoint. I mean, now there were select guys that players didn't like on opposing teams. You know, um, Kelsey Wilson, Boris Volomic, but those guys were fighting in juniors. All right. So, you know, I, I'm just saying, you know, in in a in retrospect of hockey, um, it has gone in a great place. Um, uh, I know that. Um, there have been some hot button issues we are going to stay away from going around in the league. Um, it's not our place. So we're not going to say anything. 
Um, that is our statement on that statement. Mm -hmm. And if you know, you know. <laughs> um, I feel like hockey is going in the right direction. As well as, and I'm speaking as hockey as a whole because of the women's league too. Right. I'm very happy to see that. Women's hockey is some of the most skilled hockey you will ever see. It is so skilled based. Yeah, there's checking and hitting, but no fighting. Very minimal fighting. Um, but like just the competitiveness that they have, right. I have so much respect for it. Um, you know, much like college hockey, I have a lot of respect for that. Junior hockey, I have a lot of respect for that. These these players male or female, are working their butts off to get to these leagues. I've I've also seen quite a few young women getting drafted into the men's league. Very happy to see where that'll go in in the coming years. You know, um, you just, I love the game. I love watching hockey. I watched three different games today. <laughs> You know, I went back and watched the Vancouver slaughter of Edmonton. Um, Ekholm's out. I don't know why. Um, you know, there's just so much to watch. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just curious. Um, you know, I'm, I'm so excited to watch the Admirals this Saturday. Uh, I'm amped up for that. By the way, you can watch. AHLTV.com. Free. <laughs> it's free. But signing off our show, per the usual, I forgot. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to go to Hockey Locker, 202 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414 800 7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Thank you and have a wonderful Friday.